So believe it or not, the quail actually had started uh, shedding their, or molting their uh, winter feathers several weeks ago. Which means that they are actually pretty much fully feathered out now. Um, if they want to um, use their uh, full flying capacity, they, they can. And they have been able to for, I don't know, um, probably a couple weeks, I'm guessing. Um, and by what I mean, uh, what I mean by wing clipping, uh, back in late fall, early winter, we clipped their wings, um, due to them actually running into, literally running into, um, the walls, um, and basically it doesn't hurt the animal at all, it's, it's just like a nail trim, if you do it right, you're, you're not going to get anything that's, um, you know, going to bleed, it's not going to be painful to the quail at all. Um, it's just like trimming somebody's nails, basically, the very tips of those uh, wings, the, f the flight feathers on them, is what you're trimming. And you do have to look up exactly how to do it, just so you make sure you do not harm the animal accidentally. Um, but basically, it's just, it, it doesn't totally limit their flight. But it'll limit their flight enough that they don't just, you know, smash right into the thing. So basically, as I was talking in my other video, quail do not have a very good ability to turn when they fly. They, they, they can't hardly turn at all. They, they just like to fly straight. They're not technically um, completely flight able. They can sustain flight for very short periods of time, but they can't really get much actual lift when they fly. Um, they're, they're still considered a foul species that, um, you know, sticks relatively to the ground. In the wild, they would only fly to get away from predators. Their primary source of, you know, transportation is just walking and running. You know, they don't, they don't fly to go somewhere. They, they, they stay to the ground. So they're actually, you know, they're, they're fat bodied. It makes sense that they wouldn't have very good aerodynamic skills. Um, I just didn't realize that they were that bad at navigating and turning. So basically what I had to do was um, clip their wings just until they learned this new enclosure. If you, if you were um, watching the other update I did, it talked a little bit about how the quail, um, you know, were, were, were very, very new to this and enclosure. I mean, really brand new to it when they broke their wings. Um, the, unfortunately, they would fly into it, they would realize what, what was happening, and then they would try to turn, and they would get one wing caught, or not really caught, but they, they would slam into it with just one wing because they couldn't turn in time. Um, so that's basically how the, the two of them that broke their wings got their wings broken. And I was talking about how I didn't even realize how it was happening until I saw it happen. So the first the first one I thought maybe someone was, was picking on somebody, but actually it was just... Um, an unfortunate not knowing the boundaries of their their aviary yet and so basically I thought you know okay when they do learn the boundaries of their aviary um, you know is it gonna be safe for them to, to keep their wings you know unclipped and so that's what I was trying to see you know have they learned how far they can go because if they know where the boundaries are they're you know they're much less likely to accidentally run into it so I've been watching as their feathers have been growing back um, you know we clipped them back in late fall and now their spring feathers are all grown back so they have the ability the, the optimum quail flying ability um, if they want to and I've been monitoring them really closely since their feathers have been coming in and I've not seen any signs of them not knowing their boundaries or accidentally, you know, flying into these walls. So at this point I do think it's safe just to leave them, um, just the natural feathers that, that uh, Mother Nature gave them. Um, it's a lot less stressful uh, to the quail because you don't have to catch them even though it doesn't hurt them, you know, just the act of catching them, you know, kind of freaks them out. So, um, you know, and it's better for them if, you know, this is a predator resistant place, but it's not a predator proof place. So if a predator ever get, it did get in here, they'd have a little bit better chance if they could fly. Um, so basically, you know, the only thing now that we're watching for is, um, as our roosters kind of mature, um, 
you know, well, they're already mature. They're mature, you know, last late fall, but, but still, um, you know, it wasn't breeding season. So um, we're looking at all, all of our roosters to make sure that they are getting along with everybody and um, not, you know, actually harming anyone or fighting anyone for hens and things. So that's going to be our next kind of test to see, okay, do we have any roosters that we need to watch for? Oh, there's that one that broke her wing. Um, we've got a hen right there that broke her wing last year. Despite um, me trying to get it to kind of get back to normal, that's uh, the most normal, unfortunately. She broke it pretty bad. The most normal, and it, it just healed that way. It healed a little wonky. But uh, actually, she can still, um, maybe not fly as high, but she can still fly. Um, you know, so she's, she's still... Uh, got a little bit of lift to her even with that wonky wing there and as you can see the chickens are very really interested because they just saw me feed the quail the quail you know obviously uh, chickens can't get to their food and the, the quail have their own food here um, the chickens have plenty of food you know for throughout the yard they're not starving they just for whatever reason think for, for some stupid reason think that the quail's food is more interesting so um, they're all thinking that I just fed the quail some kind of treat or something, and really it was just their food. Um, so, but they don't know that because they can't get into the uh, aviary. Um, the reason why we do have, oh, that's the other one that broke its wing. It's a little more, uh, I don't know if you can look at the one, it's slightly wonky. Uh, that one healed a little better, the white one there. Um, kind of with its back turned looking at us. Uh, not turn the other way but um basically you know these guys wouldn't last two days um in the, the chicken yard not because of the chickens i think the chickens could learn to get along with them they're, all of our chickens are very docile um you know they're, they're not the the kind of chickens that uh, are aggressive or anything but and actually we, we do test for that for you know when we have to put baby babies in the flock we test to make sure our hens can tolerate everybody but it, and roosters but um it's actually because of the uh uh, immense amount of predators we have in the area. Uh, this backs up to just a bunch of wilderness, uh, lots and lots of wilderness, and so tons of predators. And you know they're so small, and they're a lot slower, you know, than chickens, and um, they just wouldn't last a day, unfortunately. In the wild, if you look at some of those brown ones, the the, the totally brown ones, and I, there's actually one in the corner, but you can't see her because she's uh, so easily camouflaged. There we go. Um, in nature, it's amazing just how much they resemble sticks and leaves. And you cannot see them unless they move. But in a setup like this, um, you know, they stick out like sore thumbs. Even the brown ones would stick out like sore thumbs, especially the white ones. So in nature, they're just naturally born with that kind of striped brown pattern. And I had one one time that escaped and went into the woods and I couldn't find it two feet away from me because it was, because it was lying still. And it, and it looked just like the, the leaves and the sticks. It was amazing. That's really their only defense. And so when they're on the grass like this, you know, unfortunately I did try it, but too many predators and they don't know their way home. Um, they, they can't find their way home because they don't have any homing instincts. And so all of that combined, you know, kind of is why we can't just allow them to... Um, truly roam free it just is not safe for them they get lost they get eaten so so for 15 quail and a pigeon just just to remind you this is their entire place it's huge it's you know from here all the way down is their whole home and so i did that on purpose to make it feel as wild as possible um, I gave them as much space as I possibly could. And they actually like to muddy up these areas because they spend a lot of time, for whatever reason, in these two corners. Um, yeah, and a lot of times they're, they're not even out in the rest of the, the place. But um, you actually do need a place about this big to be able to still have grass and it not get completely bogged down. I get really angry when people say that a three foot by two foot, you know, ground space is, you know, good for 15 quail in a free range. No, no, absolutely not. Not if you want them to have a good quality of life, a truly. Now, it's a lot better than, you know, sticking them in cages, a hundred, you know, a hundred sticking in a hundred tiny cages, you know, all together, thousands crammed in there. Um, but, and then just one last thing, if you haven't looked at our other videos, 
that has a tarp on it just because it doesn't have a roof and right now it's in the place where there's no roof we move, we have to move that around because of the mud this is the part that's got the roof on it here where i'm standing so um it it rained last night so that's why we have that tarp on there but we do take that off when uh when the, there's no expected rain and um also if you haven't watched our other vi uh, farm videos that yes that is one pigeon in with a bunch of quail she was adopted and she absolutely loves the quail her name's thunder um she's a adopted aloe pigeon um uh, technically was just a call that was sold very cheap to us but uh, I, I consider that kind of adoption because you know had she not been sold I don't want to think about what they might have done with her so um yeah that's uh about it for for the quail for right now we'll we'll keep you posted <laughs>